Guys, today we're gonna find out which half-ton diesel truck is more efficient. And the new contenders, which is, finishes out the half-ton diesels, the 2020 Ram 1500 with a three-liter eco diesel and eight-speed. And Chevy Silverado now has joined the, the crowd of diesels in the half-ton class with a three-liter diesel, Duramax, and a 10-speed automatic. We're gonna put them on our highway MPG loop, both empty and with a 7,000-pound trailer. Here we go. This is the towing loop with the Chevy, and let's get it topped off so we know exactly how much fuel we're using. Holy cow, diesel is almost three bucks. It's two ninety-eight. Well, actually, it's cheaper than it was a couple of weeks ago. Oh, That's good. It? All right, guys, we're using the same method. We're letting it fill up, then we wait thirty seconds, and then we top off. Currently, the Silverado fifteen hundred with a three-liter straight six is the king of fuel efficiency by the EPA. That's true. By one. Yes, thirty-three mpg on the highway. But they don't list towing numbers, do they? No, no. That's why no, we're that's, doing this. That's such a cool thing about TFL truck, is we give you loaded with the trailer numbers that nobody else does, including the government or the OEMs. Here's the thing I found out. The Silverado has a smaller fuel tank, 22 gallons on this diesel, dude. Wow. So even though it's getting 33 potentially empty two-wheel drive on the highway, you're getting a slightly smaller tank. In that Ram, you can get up to a 33 gallon tank. There you go. Just reset the trip meter back to zero. So we'll find out just what the trip meter thinks we're getting for fuel mileage. So last time we ran this exact same truck on this exact same loop, we got a crazy, crazy good number. It was way above the EPA rating of 32 on the highway. So we're redoing this run. We just want to get it right, make sure that we got all the variables taken care of. So let's get it done. Check it out. Same cabless system. And the depth filler is also in here. So both Chevy and Ram using the same type of system. Although in the Chevy, this door, the fuel door is a little bit larger. This is nice. Let's wait 30 seconds. That's 30 seconds. There it is, she's all full. I'm also resetting my computer. Booyah, ready to go. All right, so we're running our standard highway MPG loop, which is basically a flat stretch of interstate. We're running 66 miles today and 70 miles an hour. And we're running both trucks at the same time. That's cool. I'm getting ready to set the cruise control. I'm going to get it up to 70 miles an hour. Same here. I'm going to set cruise and just let it run. All right, Mr. Truck. So how's the truck handling the trailer? It's doing well. We have the spring arms on the weight distributing hitch on that Gen Y adjustable hitch, and it's doing great. I'm not swerving. I'm not moving. I feel balanced. Your RPM, where are you at, do you think? I'm right at 1,500 RPM. Wow, you're barely idling down the road. <laughs> That's the way I like it. Towing this 7,000 pound trailer, this should be good. This Cimarron trailer is our test trailer we got from our friends at TransWest Truck Trailer RV. There's a link below to their website. This one happens to be a three horse slant. It's a North Star, it's seven and a half feet wide, and it's about 18 feet long. And we tow, we tow our water totes in here for weight to get our, our balanced weight to test the trucks. That's 7,000 pounds, and it works really well. Let me show you what the water tote looks like. Inside this trailer is our ballast. This happens to be a one water tote. We're checking our speed with a GPS device on my phone. GPS app called Altimeter, and also it's showing our elevation. Here I am, about 1600 RPM, eighth gear running empty in the Ram, and we're almost to our turnaround point, and I'm showing 31.1 MPG. Mr. Truck, 
Doc, what MPG are you showing? Hey, I'm showing 12.4. Hey, that's pretty good for that type of trailer. We have a little bit of an extra drag with that hay uh, rack on top. I got horses in the back. Horse tech is attached. My hat is flat black. And I've got some something else. You don't remember the song, do you? Cool, the Duramax diesel, this is that new one. That's that inline six we've all been talking about. It's a new kid on the block. It's the, la you know, it's the last of the three OEMs to get in this market. And this has 277 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque with a 10 speed. That's part of the magic. Yeah, and it's actually the most horsepower in this segment, in the half-ton segment, 277, like you said. But it's not the torque king. The Ram has actually got more torque. That's true. The Ram actually has higher towing capacity, a few other things, and this one, you know, this may be a big contender for fuel mileage. We'll find out. Well, cool, look at that. We got the, we look at the hitch, make sure it's hooked up on the trailer. We got that whole rear view for, looks like it's counting down. Was it counting down from five? It was up there a ways. Because legally you can't do that too long. You get stop watching your windshield. You'd be looking at your trailer all the time. But that is so nice, because that's one way. You know, we run our lights on, and that tells us if the trailer lights are working, we know it's plugged in. But this way, you can see if there's a problem with maybe safety change or the coupler or, you know, a lot, a lot of things you can learn from a backup camera without going in reverse. This is leaf springs on the Silverado. It's still the same Hotchkiss kind of leaf spring on the back end. I think they're asymmetrical with Chevrolet, moving the axle a little bit farther forward. This is doing really well. We got weight, we got sway control and all that. And so I, I think the ride is very good. I mean, half tons generally ride better than heavy duties. And I like this. So it'd be interesting to get into the Ram with that rear coil suspension and see how that feels, if it feels differently on this same road. While Ram offers their diesel engine in every trim, Chevrolet does not. They don't offer it in their WT work trucks. It starts with the LT, but this truck right here is an RST, which is a little bit more expensive, but comes with more equipment it's more of a sport truck look with a monochromatic grille, but it's also a two-wheel drive truck, so it's got a low air dam, and it should be pretty aerodynamic on our loop. Hey, Mr. Truck. I'm showing 30.9 right now on the, on the uh, unloaded ram. We're getting 10.8. All right, well, let's see what the pump says. There it is, just pulled in, 30.8 now, 30.8. Wait, the price just went up. Holy cow. Wait, we were gone an hour, and now, <laughs> now it's 10 more cents per gallon? How does that work? This fuel is more expensive now. We need your uh, good watch. Oh, yes. My pre, oh, ho holy cow, you didn't use any fuel again. I remember this last time we got 40 miles a gallon. It clicked off so fast. Wow, so, 30 seconds. Yeah. Are you gonna squeeze it? Oh, do you want me to do it? I thought you had. Whoa! Two zero zero zero. Two gallons? Yeah. So it's really simple, guys. <laughs> 66 divided by 2, 33. So you're saying we beat the EPA by one? Yeah, we did beat the EPA by one. And the truck said 30.8. So the truck was underestimating itself. Yes, yes. Good result? Yeah, that's, that's very, very realistic. I mean, it's very believable. The 40 was kind of unbelievable, but this is cool. 33 is pretty good. Ooh, okay, oh, 30 seconds, pretty dude. Pretty fast, man, pretty fast. Okay, there's 30 seconds. Holy. All right, so 5.519, this is Chevrolet towing. 66 divided by 5.519. Drum roll, 11.9. But if you round it, it's like 12.0. Wow. So officially 12.0 because we always try to round up. Well, hey, of course we're using Gen Y hitch for our hitch on these tests and on the Ike Gauntlet and the MPG loop. And this is an adjustable hitch. We've done a few new things, so it's got a thing to tighten up uh, this bolt which holds on the ball. So all that works out really well. Now looky here, we always complain about these hoops 
that manufacturers put on for safety chains. And this is a nice, easy one. We like this one. This is always good. Easy to get off. Almost done swapping trailers now, but the Ram two-wheel drive is actually a little bit taller in the back, so we're out of jack. Yes, we have extended ourselves all the way, taking it off of that Silverado. So what are we going to do? I think I'm going to use you as a little bit of weight to push me down a little. So my ballast will help you in this situation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Whoa! The safety chain hoops on this ram are a little bit hidden. They're further back and further up. So you almost have to get on your knees to hook up your safety chains. Because look at this one. It is way tucked underneath there to the inside. It's like underneath the bumper. Under the hood right here is what Ram calls the third generation of the Eco Diesel. It's a three liter V6, right? Right, just came out. But they had some emissions issues last time with the previous gen engine, right? That's true. So they've improved this engine, they say. 80% new parts internally here, new turbocharger. They've done a lot to improve this. Well, it's got a lot more power. I mean, this is 260 horsepower, 480 pound-feet of torque. And look at all the room you got in here, man. This is almost like what they're known for in their Cummins. You got a lot of room around this engine to work on things. Okay, there we go. We're all good, zeroed out and ready to go in the Chevy. Not towing. Let me turn off the tow haul mode. Let me make sure I'm in normal mode. There I am, normal mode. So Mr. Truck, I'm so happy we got both of these trucks here together because both of them are meant for fuel efficiency but also towing. Well that's true, I think the Ram has the highest towing capacity with 12,560 versus 9,300 on the Silverado. Yeah, and their payload ratings are about the same, although Ram has slightly higher payload, about 2,000, and the Chevy here has a payload rating of about 1,800. Yeah, and then they also have those fuel mileage rear axle ratios. The Chevrolet here has a 323 rear end, while the Ram has a 321. Of course, the transmissions are different, so this is why we're doing this real-world testing to find out exactly how they perform. In 2020 heavy-duty GM trucks, they also have an engine block heater cord and a brand new connector. Their connector is on the side, but on this light-duty half-ton, check it out, it's in the front. It's really easy to plug in to keep your engine block warm at, on a cold night, but what if you have something attached here or what if it's caked with snow? We're still to test that. These two trucks match each other on configuration and weight very closely. This is a Tradesman with a chrome package, also level one group, and it's a two-wheel drive, and it's really meant for high efficiency. The EPA rating on this particular model two-wheel drive is 32 MPG on the highway, and we'll test it today. This truck also has a high-tech trick up its sleeve. It has a little chin down below. Let's see if it will help today. All right, Mr. Truck, this is our exit. Uh, what is your trip computer saying? Um, it shows MPG at 10.6. Wow, 10.6 sounds low. You won't believe what mine says. Oh, your price says 30. 35.7. Holy smoly, another record. So this is this new mirror from Silverado, and it measures 13 inches from the A pillar to the end of the mirror. And this is new because it actually bolts to the sheet metal in the door, not in the triangular part of the glass. So Chevy says you have better visibility. I think they're right on the driver's side. But I'm not so sure that this gives you any more visibility, but that's where we are. We're 13 inches and no spotter mirror on the side you really need it at. There's a spotter mirror on the left side, which you don't need, but nothing over here for a trailer. Now on this Ram, this is the standard mirror, just like on the Silverado, it's not the towing mirror. But if you measure it from the A pillar, clear out to the edge, of the mirror, it's 15 inches. That's two inches more than the Silverado. So the reach is farther. And then this little gap in here between the A pillar and the base of the mirror, you got more room to get rid of that blind spot. You know, it's a, so it's a little bigger, a little more reach than the Silverado. And the spotter mirrors, I love spotter mirrors. These concave mirrors in the corner. Ram has them on both mirrors, which you should have. This is the coil spring truck on the rear end of this. Doesn't have the air right, has the coils. That's the standard suspension on these Rams. And I noticed coming up here, 
that the rear end was moving around a little bit. I thought maybe we had some wind, and I kept looking for the for the grass to blow, and it literally wasn't wind, but I was getting a little more movement on the butt of this truck than I was on the Silverado. So I don't know, it's not dramatic, but it's enough that you could feel it in the steering wheel under the seat. So, you know, it's always the old discussion is which is the better suspension, a coil or a leaf. And the half ton class, you know, it's it can go either way. Now listen, hopefully you can hear it. But you know what? Sometimes you can hear this new Duramax. It's a clean sheet design from the ground up, all new engine. But it is so quiet, you don't hear it in the cab. You think it's a gas engine. I've heard gas engines louder than this. Now this, Eco Diesel, third generation, you can hear it. It's not extremely loud, they keep improving these. And this, they changed the piston to an offset pin so that it eliminates some piston slap. So they worked hard to make this quieter too. But you can tell the difference between the two, which one's quieter and which one's louder. But you know, it's just like some of these big V8 gas engines. Some people like the thunder that comes out of the engine. Yeah, the rear camera is the same kind of view we saw on the Chevy, and it had uh, a good view of safety chains, the hitch, the wiring, the connector. But this, uh, it's a smaller screen. I mean, yeah, it's a very small screen. Of course, these are kind of both uh, closer to the basic trucks, so that's fine. When we talk about fuel economy, it's all about saving money at the pump. But how much do these diesels actually cost? Well, in the Ram, it's available as a tradesman, and it's a $4,995 option. The truck you see behind me with all the stuff it's got, it's just over 41,000 bucks. On the other hand, the Chevy, the diesel engine doesn't cost you as much, about 3,890 bucks, but it starts at a higher level. It starts at the LT level, and this RST with all the options you see here, including all-star package, just under $49,000. You get more things in the Chevy, but it costs more. So the truck, the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel is actually a pre-production truck. Um, and Ram told us that its trip meter may be a little bit off on fuel economy. I hope so, because right now it's not going to match what we did last time. What is it saying? Okay, wow. Um, my Chevy, guess what my Chevy is saying? Um, I'm 34.4. Well, that's a good number. If that's true, if 34.4 is true, this Chevy is basically like a little sedan on the highway. Well, that's what a 10 speed and a 321 rear axle ratio does for you. I give you the nozzle, Mr. Truck. Oh, thank you. I like this greasy, oily thing. Okay, so this is really important because the Chevy got 12.0 rounded. 12.0 today with the same trailer, same load. So let's see what this loaded Ram can do. Okay, 30 seconds. Okay, there's 30 seconds. All right, we'll give it a tickle. Is he going to watch me here now? All right, here's the damage, 5.988. So already that's a little bit worse, but we need to find out exactly what happens. Now, 66 miles divided by 5.988 is 11. Really? Holy smokes. You can see on top of the trailer, it's got a hay pot on it. So you stack your hay up there, it's got a ladder up the back. So it's a little less aerodynamic than the one without a hay pod, which we pulled last time. Sure. And so I'm glad we did both trucks again. So this is a good matchup between the two brands. Same thing. All right, but how does the Chevy do empty, unload it? Okay, I'm removing the nozzle. Get that old greasy handle over here. Do you want me to insert the nozzle? Oh, yeah. Since you have it in your hand, okay. go ahead and put that puppy in there. All right, I inserted the nozzle, and now we're finally gonna start the pump. You're gonna squeeze it? I'm gonna squeeze it. Boom! Unbelievable. I look at this. 1.943. Uh it's gonna be super close, guys. 66. 
divide by 1.943. Almost 34. It is. It's rounding to 34, dude. Cool. Now, so was, one better. What was the RAM? What was it? 33. Was one, yeah, it was one better too. Yeah. We are beating the EPA. Hooray. We're beating it in the real world. Yeah. And the Chevy is one MPG better, both empty and loaded. Yeah. Well, the actually, RAM went the other way loaded. It lost some. Right yeah. Now. So there you have it. Real world. The trucks are a little bit better than the EPA says. Yes. Unloaded. Right. And you're losing a lot of efficiency towing a 7,000 fairly large trailer. Right, but still not as much as a gas, but it's more than I thought it would be. You know, gas you still lose more because you're running higher RPMs, but no. These puppies like to run them at that 1,500 RPM, which is impressive on these little trucks. Nice. And go back to tfltruck.com for my news views and real-world reviews and where else? MrTruck.com. Mm -hmm.